Well, good day, Lake Ridge, and welcome to Good Friday. Good Friday is an important and central part of the Passion Week. Uh, we've been on a Lenten journey leading up to Easter, uh, which is Sunday, but right now, Good Friday, this marks the moment in the story that Jesus is crucified, dies, and is buried. And so, for hundreds and hundreds of years, the church has set aside time for a Good Friday service. And so, because of COVID, we can't meet in person, but we can experience this together. So, we are going to experience for the next little while um, quite a solemn set of readings. We're going to read the story of the passion of Jesus, the crucifixion, death, and burial of Jesus. And we are going to kind of follow along with um, several pieces of scripture. And we're going to use some symbolism here, uh, which goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, this Good Friday uh, reading is called the Tenebrae. And it's talking about the shadows. And it's a time where we read the scripture, but it gets darker and darker and darker. Hopefully my candles are holding out here, but I, I have here seven candles that are going to help us tell the story. So settle in. It's slow. It's thoughtful. It's pensive and reflective. But I hope through it all you will experience something meaningful uh, as you step into this uh, Easter weekend together. Let's join along. As we begin, I have here a nail. Of course, Jesus was nailed to a cross, and so often during this service, people are invited to hold a nail in their hands. So if you have one, you can hold one and follow along with us. It's just a reminder of the very visceral, real experience that Jesus had when he died on the cross. Also, if you wish to, you can have some candles too, and uh, you mostly just need one candle. And we're calling that the Christ candle. And this Christ candle represents uh, Jesus. And so this is my Christ candle here. Um, I made some of these other candles. Uh, these are made with my beeswax, and they are really dim. I'm not very good at candle making. But they're all still bare, barely alive, and so we are going to be using that. What's this about? Let me read. The service of Tenebrae, or shadows, dates back to the 8th century Rome. It grew out of a combination of night and early morning prayer, focusing on the commemoration of the passion of Jesus. The most significant aspect of this service is the gradual extinguishing of the lights and candles in the room, symbolizing the flight of the apostles and the darkness and disturbance that accompanied the passion. The candles represent the apostles and all followers of Christ. And this candle in the middle represents Christ himself. The dramatic high point occurs when complete darkness is reached and a loud noise is sounded at the death of Jesus. The extinguishing of the Christ candle symbolizes his three days in the tomb. The restoration, restoration of the light foreshadows the resurrection. So we are going to take and extinguish these lights over the next while reading these scriptures. And then we are going to take away the Christ candle, turn off the lights. And there's going to be just a time of darkness. And wherever you are sitting, you can maybe uh, sit in the darkness too. And we're going to reintroduce the Christ candle and it's just going to sit. We're going to hold on to it. And it's going to be lit throughout the Easter weekend until we experience the resurrection of Jesus on Easter morning. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Let's enter in to the slow and very different kind of sacred space. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should Look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and upon him was the punishment that made us whole. 
and by his bruises we are healed. It's from Isaiah 53. So may God be with you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, on this day you carried our sins into your own body, on the tree so that we might live. May we and all who remember this day find new life in you, both now and in the world to come. Meet with us as we keep this vigil today and speak to our hearts as our ears hear the record, the record of your conquering love. Amen. So Lord, have mercy. As we confess in our hearts our sins today, as we confess the places in our hearts that we have fallen short, Lord, and that fills our lives. So we thank you that your death also fills our lives and gives us hope for the resurrection to come. May we remember today our baptism and the hope of life in you and that you keep your promises to us. Amen. This is the message we've heard from him and declared to you, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. And so if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The first candle. We read together Luke twenty-three twenty-six. This first candle is called the shadow of betrayal. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. But weep for yourselves and for your children, for the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs who have not borne a child, and the breast who have not nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it's dry? Well, two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals uh, were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Shadow of Betrayal. The second candle is the shadow of desertion. Psalm 22 says this, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me and they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. The second candle. The third candle, the shadow of unshared grief. John 19. John 19, 25. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. From then on, this disciple 
took her into his home. The fourth candle, the shadow of accusation. Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 45. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemach shemachtani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so that he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's hear whether Elijah has come to save him. Then Jesus shouted again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, the tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead, and they left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man is truly the Son of God. The fifth candle, the shadow of crucifixion, John 19, 28. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked the sponge in it, put hiss, and put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and released his spirit. The sixth shadow, the shadow of disunity. Lord, we remember the words of the apostles when he wrote, Do your best to preserve the unity that binds you together. There is one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope to which God called you. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who is the Lord of all, works through all, and is in all. But Lord, we are slow to learn. We dwell on our differences and refuse to see our similarities. We suffer from a worldly mind that drums up party spirit and mistaken zeal that fuels religious pride. Lord, forgive us. Make us one in our eagerness to put aside differences and speak together your good news. Make us one in concern for the poor, the hurt, the downtrodden, the lost. Make us one in our living head, Jesus Christ, in our faithfulness to him who never fails us, and who will one day come to gather all who claim him as Lord. Amen. The Shadow of Death. Luke 23. By this time it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I trust my spirit into your hands. And with those words he breathed his last. 
And the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened. He worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. When all the crowd came to see the crucifixion, saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. We take this candle now and we, we remove it. We remove it as we read the scripture about Jesus' burial. says this. Afterwards, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus, because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 70 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following G Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body in spices, in long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden, and there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. It is finished. In the darkness, we have one hope. We have one hope in Jesus. We have hope that death is not complete. But for now, on Good Friday, we tell this story. And we hold to this hope. And so... We have a candle here. It says it's supposed to burn 120 hours. I hope so. We are going to burn this candle from Friday all the way until Easter morning. And leave it lit in our home with the hope that it is finished because he is risen indeed. May this Easter weekend be meaningful for you. May you discover the hope that comes from sitting and waiting waiting on our Lord, who descended into death for you.